Let's go with wine number one here. Awesome. Awesome wine. When it comes to the red wine of the Southern Rhone, Chateauneuf de Pop is king. Chateauneuf de Pop means Newcastle of the Pope. It's really close to the city of Avignon. When the Catholic Church relocated from Rome to Avignon, they made a little castle for the Pope. That's where Chateauneuf de Pop came from. Some of the castle still stands. But in the wine world, it's synonymous for concentrated yet delicate red wines. In Chateauneuf de Pop, there are 18 permitted grape varieties. And what's really unique for red wines besides Cote roti is you can blend white grapes in with the red grapes to make a red wine. I know some people in the comments will be saying, no, it's 13 grapes. The laws were changed several years ago. Now it's 18 permitted varieties, okay? Robert Parker was a big fan of these wines because they're complex, they can age, but you can approach them right away because they're so fruity, they're so delicious. Every time I give a casual wine drinker a Chateauneuf de Pop, they always love it. And they're easy to like, they're super delicious. I remember my first experience with the Chateauneuf de Pop when I started drinking Cote de Rhone. I thought it was cool that I could pronounce it. I liked it. I was gifted a bottle of Clos de Pop, one of the greatest Chateauneuf de Pops in the world, with some age on it. I remember looking at the label too and saying, hey, this isn't Cote de Rhone. <laughs> Chateauneuf de Pop is a crew of the Rhone. But anyways, I remember drinking it and thinking, Wow, now this is something special. Prices have risen in recent years and surrounding villages produce good wine. And one village that's considered to be on par with Chateauneuf de Pop is Gigandas. The village sits right under the Dentel de Mont Montmiral. Uh, Montmiral, sorry, my French is terrible. This tiny mountain range stands out in the Southern Rhone because it's a jagged form of rocks. The wines are grown a little higher altitude. I find them usually to have a little bit more acidity. Their prices are starting to climb too, but generally you can get wines that are less expensive than their neighbors from Chateauneuf de Pop. Rhone Appalachian laws are weird. In Gigandas, wines can be up to 80% of Grenache. They have to be at least 15% of a combination of Syrah, Morvedra, and up to 10% of other permitted varieties. In Chateauneuf de Pop, while there are 18 varieties, you could make 100% varietal wine and still call it Chateauneuf de Pop. I have actually seen 100% Morved being called Chateauneuf de Pop. Obviously, some of the best Chateauneuf de Pops are 100% Grenache. I've never seen 100% Syrah Chateauneuf de Pop, but that would be really cool. Or some weird, I'd love to see some weird grape like 100% Cunha. Regardless, we're going to put the test. We have two excellent wines here. These are two of the top cuvées from the estate. We have one Gigandas that's 60 bucks versus a Chateauneuf de Pop that's $120. I'm going to blind taste them and let's see if at its best, Gigandas can really compete with Chateauneuf de Pop. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. It's Rhone time, tasting out of my Rovsia wine glasses. These are burgundy glasses, the best inexpensive glasses I've ever used. Should work great with GSM. I'll leave a link in the description box. A lot of people purchase them, say they like them. Check them out, leave a comment, tell me if you like them. And it helps the channel, so thank you. I've been shooting a lot of big blind tasting videos. Like I said, I love doing these face-offs because you get to spend time with the wine. I'm really excited to try these because these are two wines, two producers that are at the top of the game, and two wines that are at the top of the portfolio. So let's go with wine number one here. Awesome. Awesome wine. Leather, strawberry, black cherry, like it explodes out of the glass. Pepper, meat, intense. This has got intensity. Got the strawberry, this kind of hickory sense on the back end. Uh, tannins are grippy, but it's still quite smooth. It's It smells huge, but it's actually quite delicate. Uh, that's why I'm, man, I'm leaning more towards Chateauneuf de Pop, if you can tell. My voice is kind of going down. This is refined stuff. Wine number one is really nice. Let's go to wine two. Wine two smells a little bit fresher, a little more reductive. This is more leathery. This comes out with bright fruit flavors. Strawberry, mineral, a ton of mineral. Red fruit, not a lot of wood, not a lot of oak in these wines at all. It's a cool thing about wines from the Rhone too. A lot of times they're raised in cement or they're aged in big used barrels. So sometimes you don't get as many woody flavors. This to me smells like a Chateauneuf de Pop. I thought these would be quite similar. Very different wines. This this one's brighter. This is almost like a, a, like a guy that's, or a guy, a gal, maybe a successful, like in their, their upper 20s, young 30s, a little bit more hip, a little more vibrant. This is somebody in their upper 40s, early 50s, a little more refined. Jeez, they're both more leathery, more fruity. These are both outstanding. Jeez. The mid palettes on these both spike. This is like more young man fun. Like I'm gonna go to a cool club, have the music blaring. 
and this is like more, I'm gonna go to a, a two, three Michelin star dinner where it's a little quieter, but it's still gonna be good. I don't know. Uh, you know what? For right now, for my palette, I think I'm gonna prefer this one a little bit more than this one. Let's just see what the price difference is. I'm ready. Let's take a look here. In essence, this episode was kind of easy because both the wines were great. <laughs> there were only two wines. I just did an episode where I compared some cheap wines versus some more expensive wines. That's a little bit tougher. I think that this is shot enough to pop. I don't know. That's just, it's, it's, <sighs> You know, even though I just said earlier, Chicken Das has a little more freshness, a little more acidity. These, this, these flavors remind me of a young shot enough to pop. Uh, I have 93, 94 plus. Let's start out with this one right here on my left, your right. I thought it was Chicken Das. Uh, 93 points, very good. Let's take a look here. This is, this is the Domaine uh, Brousse. This is the Lejo de Montmiral. Uh, I'm pronouncing, my French is terrible. The Gigandas 2020, so basically the high from the Mont Rial, the, the mountain range. Uh, this is 60 bucks. This is 50% Grenache, Morvedra Syrah. Very nice wine, 60 bucks. More leathery, more traditional. I don't know if this vintage or the newest vintage was in the top 100 of Jeb Dunnick's top 100 wines of 2022. I think it's excellent wine, more leathery, more refined. This is bright, 94 plus. I thought this is outstanding. Look what it is, but it's expensive. The Domaine de la Mordorache. This is the Chateau de Prable, La Reine de Bois, 120 bucks. 75% Grenache, Morvedra, Vaqueras, and Syrah. I think this has a little Cumulon. I don't know if Brousse is organic. This is organic and it is biodynamic. Outstanding wine comes with an outstanding price point. So tell me, do you like Gigandas? Do you prefer Chat enough to pop? Do you have any other favorite crews from the Southern Rhone? What do you think about Rhone wines in general? Drop it in the comments below. Thanks a lot, guys. Pretty stressed out because I'm getting ready to go on some long trips. So thanks for being here with me and I'll see you soon.